So even if you don't speak Italian, but you speak French, good news for you. It, it has very strong taste, but you know, strong as a, in a really good sense of word. I think it's such a hidden gem for you to discover. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to Aosta, a wonderful city nestled between the Alps mountains, a true hidden gem of Italy, not overcrowded by mass tourism yet at all, and just a lovely place to discover, a lovely place to spend your vacation here for its impressive history and beautiful architecture and absolutely peculiar things that you can find only here. And I'm excited to discover it together with you for the first time. So guys, if you want to join me for this ride, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button if you're not subscribed yet. And I invite you to go with me and to explore Aosta together. Let's go. Aosta is the capital city of the Valle d'Aosta region, the smallest one in Italy. Surrounded by the breathtakingly beautiful mountains, this region is not well known to foreign tourists yet, but it should be on your radar. History buffs will enjoy Aosta's Roman past, while nature lovers will be in awe of the natural beauty of this region, with clear blue water in the rivers and spectacular landscape. Guys, what really strikes me is the amount of people here differently from Ivrea from my last vlog. By the way, if you haven't seen it, I will leave you a link up here. Go watch it after this video. But there are so many people here and it's so lively and so vibrant and I love it. Although we are filming it at the same time period, it's still mid-August and it's full of life and full of people. There is one really curious thing about this region, guys, is that French language here is as official as the Italian, and you can see numerous signs, road signs, and street names that are doubled in French wherever you go, and it's so, so unique. I've never seen anything like this in Italy, obviously, for obvious reasons, but it's still so interesting, you know, so refreshing also to see this kind of a very different region with very different uh, organization, because Aosta, by the way, is an autonomous region, and it has the special status in Italy, and yeah, that's why, you know, you can see this French influence everywhere. The region of Valle d'Aosta, guys, is home to the highest peak in Europe, the highest mountain, Mont Blanc or Monte Bianco, the White Mountain. And it is called this way because it is covered in snow all year round due to the presence of the glaciers on the summit. And the highest peak, because it's like a mountainous uh, chain, and the highest peak of it is 4,810 meters high. Can you imagine? And actually, to whom the peak belongs, Italy or France, is still widely debated uh, because the two countries cannot really decide on whether the highest peak is Italian or French. And so they actually cannot decide where the actual border should run uh, because it runs literally on uh, Monte Bianco, on the White Mountain. And I think it's hilarious, to be honest. There have been numerous discussions on it, and one of the local governors in Valle d'Aosta even proposed a couple of years ago that the peak of uh, Monte Bianco be recognized as belonging to the European Union as it's, you know, as a whole. But I don't think they actually came to any conclusion yet. Anyway, you can admire the mountain from here and you can even ski here because Valle d'Aosta is a perfect place for all the ski lovers as well as those who prefer hiking or just, you know, enjoying the nature in summer. Guys, here one thing I wanted to tell you. Actually, it's a little bit of a story time. Uh, I really love uh, the wine from Valle d'Aosta because I tried it 
way, way before I first came here, there was this lovely lady who worked in a local pasticceria where I lived, and uh, we kind of became friends, you know, just uh, talking and chatting, and I was coming there every day, and every summer she would go to Valle d'Aosta for her holidays, for her vacation, and once she brought me this uh, bottle of local wine, and it was absolutely divine. And now, finally, I get the chance to try it myself. And we found this amazing Kenoteca. I will obviously leave you the link in the description box, so check it out with all the places. And here today, we are trying these two types of local wine. Uh, white wine, because as the lovely ladies who work here suggested to us, white wine is the real speciality of Valle d'Aosta. And can you just imagine this um, grapes being grown here in this mountainous region. Everything counts when we talk about wine, you know, the landscape and the types of uh, ground, the soil, everything. So here, obviously, the wine uh, is ought to be special. And this one, the first one, I actually learned that you have to hold your wine glass like this as not to warm it up with uh, the temperature of your hands. This one is uh, the Gavit Straminer wine, which is a common type of grapes, but this one is grown here in Valle d'Aosta. And this in particular is called Juan de la Fe, which means the wine of the fairy. And the winery is owned by two young brothers, as they call themselves, they're the Generation Zero, meaning they're the first winemakers in their family. And they call this wine, the fairy's wine, to honor their aunt, who is an artist, and she painted uh, the um, the logo basically for this uh, for this winery, and it smells so good. This wine is an aromatic wine, meaning that when you eat the grapes and then when you try the wine, it should have the same taste. And so let's try. I've never tried the Gewürztraminer uh, grapes, but let's try the wine. Mm. I it's very very good. It's so light and so fresh and so fruity. I really, really like it. It's, it has very strong taste, but you know, strong as a, in a really good sense of word. Very pleasantly strong. And now I'm gonna try this one, which is called La Petite Arvine. And this one is, look at this glass, by the way, I love it. Uh, this one is uh, grown both in Switzerland and here in Valle d'Aosta. So it's not particularly, you know, the native of Valle d'Aosta, but it is also grown here, so why not? It's also very good. It's very fruity indeed and very fresh. I really like that, you know, the wines here are fresh. And as I said before, I really enjoy the wines from Valle d'Aosta because they're always, I don't know, they, it feels like they have more more sun, more freshness in them, and I'm pretty sure it's due to the landscape, the mountains around. And yeah, I think I love this one a tiny bit more because the taste is a bit more unique, a bit more different, you know? But this one is also very fresh and nice. So yeah, cheers, guys. I will leave you, as I said, the link in the description, so check it out and try these wines for yourself because I promise you're gonna love them. Guys, I also remind you to follow me on Instagram if you want to know where I am, what I'm up to, where I'm traveling, and be the first ones to get all the news and all the updates, and also to connect, uh, you know, on a different level from here. And also, if you like my videos and if uh, what I'm creating here is useful for you, you can support my channel by hitting either the thanks button down below near the like button, or by following the link in the description box and buying a coffee for me and for my team. Thank you so much for everyone who's already supporting us. Your support is crucial for our channel to move on and to create more videos for you. Guys, look at this cathedral. This is the cathedral of Aosta and it's so, so beautiful. And also it's so different from other cathedrals you can usually see. Look at this barrelief uh, over the entryway, wow. It's huge, it's so unique, I love it. Come, come closer, come here, I'll show you.
Aosta is famous for being called Rome of the Alps and for a good reason. Founded by the Romans in 25 BC, Aosta was then and still is today a perfect example of the Roman urban planning. And of course you can still see numerous Roman sites, from the Forum to the Roman Theater. You know, guys, I think that uh, Valle d'Aosta as a region is so underrated. Although there are, you know, quite a lot of tourists for considerably uh, small size of Aosta today, I still feel like it's often uh, foreseen, forgotten by, uh, you know, tourists, especially foreign tourists, because there are lots of Italian tourists here or French tourists who are coming from across the border. But with all this beauty, with mountains and its history, the food, the wine, everything i think it's such a hidden gem for you to discover i really hope that i'm inspiring you to come here and to explore it because for me it's been a revelation here i love it so much i love this region i think that this beauty the nature here is probably forgive me guys but probably one of the most beautiful in italy i think the nature here is the best and i i just love it so much i think it's a perfect place for travelers all year round you know it's perfect in summer it's actually is not very hot today even and it's also obviously perfect in winter especially if you love skiing or snowboarding with the beauty and the cuisine and everything why not traveling to valle d'aosta the next time Guys, did you know that Valle d'Aosta, together with another Italian region of Molise, are the only two regions to not have a single UNESCO World Heritage Site? And I think this is not right at all, because it is home not only to the uniquely beautiful nature with all these mountains and all, but also, I mean, Aosta itself is such a pretty town and it has so many historically important landmarks. And also the whole region is home to incredibly beautiful and very ancient castles numerous castles there are literally tons of them on every corner and not by chance many filmmakers actually love this region so much as to choose it as the background for their movie sets speaking of which guys as a huge marvel cinematic universe fan i couldn't avoid mentioning that one of the mcu films was set here and you may wonder now when did the avengers go to italy well technically they didn't but in the avengers age of ultron in the scene when the avengers were taking down the hydra's headquarters it just happened so to be located here inside Fuerte de Bart, just mere 30 minutes drive from Aosta, right behind my back. I'm so excited to be seeing it in real life, you know, and wow, it's absolutely majestic. So fellow Marvel fans, this place is a must for you, absolutely. The fortress was once a castle of the Count of Aosta in 1034, and it had a long and complicated history, being completely destroyed by Napoleon and then restored, and today it operates as a museum, an exhibition center, and of course, a perfect movie set. And that's it for today, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this vlog from Aosta. I loved it so, so much. I love this region and I love this city and obviously the castle. My fangirl heart is so, so happy to have seen it finally. And guys, if you want to see more vlogs like this, don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell button down below because I have so many more exciting vlogs for you in store, guys. I'm so excited to be back to my regular plot schedule. So as always, don't forget to like, comment, and share this video with your friends so we can make even more videos like this for you. Thank you so much for being here. I wish you all to travel more and please enjoy your day.